is recommending the like did we not read the same book i just i don't understand hi i'm carly thank you for joining me back here at bookish pixie reads i'm so glad that you've joined me so this is a series i'm thinking about having or can you please help me help me please and i think this will be whether or not it's about help me understand why a book is so popular or help me understand everyone else's response to a book today's book the book where can you please help me please help me is the gunkle by stephen rowley now i want to make one thing clear this is not a bash on the gunkle i loved the gunkle i read this last year pretty much almost a year ago it was one of my top five books of last year of 2021 i loved it i adored it i would recommend it this is not about the book in and of itself my issue that i need help with please help me is that when i read the gunkle what i took from it is that this is a really sad story it's a really sad story oh this is not a spoiler free review. If you haven't read it and don't want to know stuff, go away. Like, subscribe, come back another day. But, the, but when I read this, I took this to be a very sad story. And I am seeing people all over talking about how this is such a lighthearted, like fun book. And I'm just like, what, what are we talking about? What did I read that you read that we did not see these same things? So I'm a member of two Facebook book club groups and I've seen this in both or people are, somebody is putting, putting out there in the group going, I'm looking for a lighthearted read fiction. Anybody got good recs? And people are just like the gunkle, the gunkle, the gunkle. And I'm like, no, don't read the gunkle. If you're looking for something lighthearted, please don't. I've seen stuff where people are like my best friend's in the hospital. She's about to have a baby and she's looking for books to read where she can turn her brain off any recs for her. Oh, she should read the gunkle. And I'm just like, you know what she shouldn't read is the gunkle. Don't read the gunkle when you're about to have a baby in the hospital. Just this week, I saw someone go, my mother-in-law is about to go to the, is going to be starting chemo this week. She's looking for fun, lighthearted reads that she doesn't have to think about too much because her brain might be a little messed up because of the chemo. And people are like, gunkle, read the gunkle. And I'm like, and there was at least one other person who was just like, please don't read the gunkle. Like, the whole thing that the story surrounds is that a woman died of cancer. Like, don't tell your cancer mother to read the, like, who is recommending the, like, did we not read the same book? I just, I don't understand. If you're still with me and you haven't read it, that was our lead character. He's this gay guy. He, um, after college, after some time, he went to LA. He was a famous TV star. And then he like withdrew. He pulled a Taylor Swift. He's living in like a house in Palm Springs and we haven't seen him in forever. So he's wandering around on the cover with caftans, caftans with little children following around him. He's with his cocktails. It gives very anti-mame vibes, which I love anti-mames. That was one of the reasons I was like, yes, I'm gonna read this. <laughs> Not really remembering what the back of the book was because I'm a vibe reader and I, in my head because of the cover, I was like, this is a lighthearted read. But like I said, I loved it, truly loved it. The book, somebody in the book even says, what do you think's gonna happen here? You're gonna be the male anti-mame. So, I mean, there is, ref there is a reference to that, but the story revolves around, as I said, our lead guy. He pulls a Taylor Swift. He secludes, all barely kind of reclusive into his house. He doesn't take gigs anymore. And while this is happening, his best friend's in, New in like Connecticut, married to his brother, has a couple kids. She visits a couple of times with the kids, but he doesn't have a close bond with these children. They she gets sick she gets cancer she dies kind of at the very beginning of the story when he goes for the funeral and everything we find out that the husband has been taking some of her drugs to cope he is now addicted to drugs and now he has to go to rehab so somebody has to take care of the children they wish it for to be our lead the gunkle the gay uncle if you're not familiar with the term and so he takes these kids he's like what do i do with kids i know nothing about kids and it's sort of you know him him helping like these kids cope with the loss of their mother 
and him kind of coping with the loss of his friend. This was a deep, this was a really good friend for, th for him. Um, and also we find out that he had a partner, um, someone that he loved very much, they were practically married, who had died in a very horrific way, pre, several years pre-story, that he has never gotten over or moved. He's still very steeped in that grief. And we find out with that death that his partner's family was very homophobic and they would not let him be in that space because they were not married. He wasn't considered a family member and the family would not let him, let Gunkel be in the room with him when he passed. They wouldn't let him be part of the funeral. And this is all very traumatic for him because of course it is. And he's like, I have a friend who's best friends with somebody that went through this exact thing. And so this sort of thing is very hard for her. And a friend of my, and, and I, well, so we read this for like a book club thing. And a friend and I, a, a fr one of my best friends and I, independently of each other, told this other friend, don't read this book. Like, this will be very hard for you, don't read this book. And, and I just understand how two of us individually can be like telling someone don't read this book. Well, I've got people on Facebook groups saying, yes, mother who has cancer, I think you would love this book. Oh, I'm looking for a lighthearted romp. Yes, please read this book where this mother dies and her children are met with this, have to stay with this man who doesn't want kids. Like, I just don't understand. I need someone to help me understand. I mean, it does have its lighthearted moments. It's not a movie that it's, it's not a book that's just like in the grief all the time. They have a Christmas party in July, but that's like his way of helping these kids like have a happy time. Like all the happy times are still like sprouting out of the sadness. You know, it's not just happy to be happy. And it ends on a happy note or on a, on a better note. Like you see growth and character development and all that's there. It's an amazing book. It's just not one that I see that I would ever recommend to someone who's going through it or who is looking for a lighthearted thing. And I just, I don't understand where people are coming from. And I would love it if you could explain it to me. If you were one of these people, and I sometimes wonder, I'm like, I see a lot of people also saying that if they were casting this as a movie, that they would cast Dan Levy in it. And... I'm like, are y'all seeing him as David Rose? Do y'all see David Rose? David Rose is a character in Schitt's Creek. Dan Levy plays him. And everybody's just like, oh. And I'm like, Dan Levy would be fantastic at it. And I'm like, is that what y'all see? Is y'all see David Rose? And is that why y'all think this is this lighthearted thing? And I'm like, just because, like, and I don't know if I'm just being too, too judgmental and too jumping sort of off the gun here. But I'm just like... Are we fetishizing gay men that it's all camp and flamboyancy and so therefore it's lighthearted? I, I just, I don't understand. And I keep trying to understand where this viewpoint's coming from and I just don't, don't get it. And I would love it if somebody would help me. But also I highly recommend this book. It's like a five star book. It's just not one. So I read this during Hurricane Ida. I live in the New Orleans area. I wasn't allowed to evacuate because of my job. And I kind of lived at my job for a week and a half. Like I didn't go home. My home's great. We had some roof damage, nothing terrible, nothing traumatic, but like we didn't have power, we didn't have water. And you didn't have street lights. And my shifts are in the middle of the night. I'm not driving after a hurricane in the middle of the night, with no street lights, with who knows what in the streets. Like, so I stayed at, cause we had some generators. So we had some power. We had a little bit of AC, but we had no running water. Our building leaked, we had, we collected all the water from the leakage and that's what we were using to flush toilets. Like, it was a trial. It wasn't like the worst thing ever. It was, you know, kind of an adventure. I'm still waiting for the PTSD of that to kick in. But maybe I wasn't in a good space to read it. But I'm like, but the things that I mentioned are still in this book. Like I'm not making those things up. These sad things happen. And I'm just like, am I just, was I just not in the right place to read it? I also had a friend die at the beginning of 2020 who left behind a husband and a son. And so I'm a little more sensitive to that maybe. But again, these things happen in this book. And I don't know why people are recommending it as like this happy-go-lucky thing. So I don't know. Please help me understand. Please explain it to me in the comments. 
but you can also like and subscribe. But please help me understand what's going on. But thanks for stopping by. Love you.